bought a bunch of these uh, connectors that the military uses and I have it interface with this uh, connector that hooks up to this radio here. So here's the accessory connector. And that's done. And this one here mates with this connector here. If you guys have been in the service, you probably know about this trick. The O-ring here, it's kind of hard to put this connector on, so a little bit of spit. Rub it against the O-ring. It slips on like so. So the remote is set. The cable usually is uh, the military, I think they call it WD-1, and it's uh, like I would say 18 or 16 or 14 gauge cable, stranded cable. Some of those cables are steel and some of those uh, strands are copper in that particular set. So uh, anything smaller than this, let's say Cat5 cable, the, the uh, phone stuff and everything, you're not going to get the range. It'll work, but I think it'll just reach up to maybe a thousand feet, two thousand, three thousand feet maybe, where this would do the full two miles, but that's expensive. I mean, it's kind of impractical to go two miles, but the uh, capabilities are there if you need if you need it. So you got some post here. You just press down on it and take it one side and, and hook it up. Just one pair, and the same deal with the uh, local unit with the two posts here. Hook it up. You have a volume knob here. Turn it on. So right now I'm going to call. The poor guy that's up on a hill on the uh, going from local, no, remote to local. You have this plunger here. And if you notice, you hear that infamous TA312 uh, uh, clacker. And you also have a visual call light here. You could turn down the buzzer and just have working off a light for sound. Uh, what do you call that? Protection. A sound discipline. Then you got light discipline as well. You could turn off the light and this is adjustable for, for whatever level. So it gets louder and you don't see the light anymore. Same way it goes back, back this way to your command post. Right, so this thing actually is two equipment in one. It's a radio remote control unit and it's also a telephone sort of uh, field line here. So stock out of the military, this will not work with current radios, uh, civilian commercial ham radios. Uh, if you try to talk out the radio, it'll key it up and everything if you got it hooked up right, but, but your voice will be very, very low. Uh, so I have to put a amplifier in here to boost up the, the microphone input into the radio so it'll be the proper levels to transmit over the air so that's another modification that I will do on another video parts are on order and they're coming to me uh, I don't have another hand mic to demonstrate going back and forth so here I rigged up the uh, speaker output out of this hand mic here and it's feeding into my uh, telephone test set here so you guys can hear that so here's the procedure I'm gonna call the guy up to change the channel Flip this to telephone, call him up, he calls back and say, hey, what do you want? And here I'm going to talk over the telephone only, it's not going to go over the radio. Hey, private, change the channel and also change the batteries while you're at it. Alright, so I just gave him a command and he's going to respond back. So I'm going to flip these over so he could talk to this guy real quick. So I'm going to switch them around. Switch the microphone around. It'll do a little spit thing on it too. Okay. So I, I, did, I did what he instructed. I'll call him back. Then he calls back and say, hey, what do you want? And here I have to set this to sp telephone and it's spring loaded so I have to keep it down there change the channel change the batteries you're set to go and that was over the telephone the telephone line only so now 
the remote unit could talk over the radio uh, for another 10 hours or so. So my modification, remember I said that I couldn't transmit my voice over the, the uh, microphone because it'll be too low coming out of this spot here. So I cut the microphone jack here, or the microphone line, and I placed this toner so it'll set out a tone over the air that, to let me know that I'm transmitting. And here I'm going to demonstrate. Push to talk. I'm over at this set. It's going to go to this set. And there's my scanner that's, that's on the same channel so you can hear it. There it is. Red light transmit, and it's transmitting. And that's your radio remote control. And if you notice, it didn't come over the handset of this here because uh, it's at the radio setting, and this is always spring loaded to remote. Now I could put the handset here from the from the local side and spring this over the radio. And now the private on top of the hill could talk over the radio if he wanted to, and then it springs back, and the local unit, the remote unit, will have control again. This you could also hear the traffic over the speaker. So I'm going to flip the switch over to radio to radio speaker, and that'll turn on the uh, the speaker here. So let me turn this tone off and turn this down. Let me open up Squelch. That's just noise out of this radio going into this uh, local unit over the line and out the speaker. And here I got some volume. And if you don't want it to go over the speaker, you just place it back to remote and then it'll come over the speaker on the uh, handset. I'm going to have to turn it up so you guys can hear. It's very low, but you can hear it. Let me turn this up a bit. Okay, there it is. So you can have that noise discipline and just hear it off of uh, the handset itself. Okay, let's go remote. I'm going to disconnect the short cable I hear that I use in for my demo. Take this Jimmy Rig adapter away and taste it, take this this set up on a hill. Okay, quick demo. I'm losing daylight here. Here's my local unit with the radio on a prominent location. There's my little toner box so I can hear what's going on. And I have my radio tuned into the local weather station, but the transmit is gonna be another transmit frequency that, that we could hear. So I won't be interfering for all you legal Lolitas out there. And there's my wire. This wire here is uh, ethernet cat5 cable. And I'm just using one pair and I think the, the gauge on that is 24, either 24 or 26 gauge, I forget. But anyway, it's really thin. And you can use that. So that means you can use any household cable for, for you know, a good amount of distance. And here I am. This is for a future project. I'm stringing up some cable to do a uh, tower. And there's my cable. I'm going down to my little command post right down there into my garage a little scanner antenna I got up so I can listen to what's going on temporarily until I get a more stable position that right there is future dinner and going into my garage coming out of the handset here and I got this on radio only so it's only going to come out of this handset here's radio so that's the radio up on a hill from the safety of my uh, location here now I'm going to transmit it's transmitting from way up there pretty cool huh Compared to fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars for a commercial gear, this thing here takes the cake and is way more rugged. This thing was built in nineteen, or was made or introduced like in the early sixties. Uh, it's all analog. Uh, on the comments below, you're going to see a uh, 
technical manual on this that will give you all the details and the repair manual. It's the repair manual on how to fix this stuff if, if it goes crap on you. And this is the inside. This particular unit, it's brand spanking freaking new. I mean, I think they only put batteries in it once. Other than that, completely new. I won the eBay lottery. I got this off of eBay. I bought the whole set for $70, $40 shipping because it is kind of heavy. I think it's 22 pounds for the whole set, the two, the two uh, units. But uh, yeah, all these components are all analog. Just capacitors, resistors, and transistors, coils, and, and transformers. Uh, it's EMP resistant, more so than, than the uh, computerized stuff. Uh, if you see IC chips in here and everything, they're going to blow. Not as great as tubes, but it's the second best. And this thing's been around since 1962, and I think they still use this today. This piece of gear is the freaking 1911 of communications gear as far as uh, remote control. And there's three revisions on this. The B model is the more prevalent. So if you see these and you see the B model, ANJRA39 Bravo, grab it. Uh, the difference between them is if, if you have that local unit up on the hill and you're next to a powerful uh, radio, HF radio, that's kicking out like a thousand watts, you know, like C illegal CB uh, users, they got 1K watt power amplifiers. This is immune to the, to the fields of radiation that, that would cause it to kind of go spastic and interfere and stuff like that. Radio frequency interference, it'll prevent that. Uh, the earlier models, the A models and the, a, and the regular models, they don't, they don't have that protection. But the B and C model does. This, the price range on this, if you, if you look around the web, is from $70 all the way up to $265, $300. Uh, I think it's a good deal at $250, $265 around there. Especially if you get it brand new condition like this here. Got the whole set brand new, just about. It, it's a steal. And, and I got away with murder with $70 with this thing. I jumped on it. So there you have it. A long ass introduction on the uh, GRA39 Bravo radio remote. Uh, in later videos, when I get all the parts in, you're going to see me modify this gear to work with uh, current commercial ham and, and uh, civilian radio gear. Uh, there is some modification that needs to be done to make this work on there. And I think this is going to be the first or only source of information that will be out there showing you how to do that because there isn't much information on these two units. And the military has tons of these stuff. Every comm platoon, comm company that I've encountered has walls of these up there. And it's been in, in service since 1962 till now, maybe. I mean, there's got to be a buttloads of this stuff out there. And there is. It's a scavenger hunt. And it's a crapshoot of getting yourself a good working pair. But, uh, like I said, I got lucky with this pair here. And uh, more video to come and how to interface this with other... Uh, radios. Also, how to wire this up to your home telephone uh, wiring uh, to make it more convenient. It's going to be a series. I don't know how long or how many videos, but we'll just let it take its course. Okay, guys. Go, Allegi. Go on 10-10. You're on your own.